What are you doing? What is the reality of this land that you're walking on? What is the nature of this building that you're now looking at to your left? What is the venue that you are at? Who is the Lord who you are worshipping? All of these things, our brothers and sisters, are questions that you must be asking yourself as you walk around the house of Allah Jalla Jalla. The worst thing you can do there when you are doing tawaf, as is the situation with all of the other rites of Hajj and Umrah, is to arrive physically but only to discover that you've left your heart somewhere other than the house of Allah. Here, as you circumambulate around the Kaaba, Allah Almighty wants you to have a heart that is present, a soul that is awake, a mind that is fully engaged with what is going on in this place. I am not just an electron going around a nucleus. I am not just a planet orbiting around another planet. Something much bigger is happening in this moment in time. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, brothers and sisters, wants your heart to be fully engaged. Especially when you are now making dua. Allow your heart to shiver. Be aware of what you are doing. And indeed it is a very worrying sign when a person arrives now around the Kaaba and begins his or her tawaf. And they find that they don't know how to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not talking about the memorization of dua from Quran and Sunnah. I am not speaking about this and understanding their meanings. I am not speaking about that. I am speaking perhaps about a manifestation that you shall see when you arrive. Perhaps groups are following an imam or a student of knowledge or a group leader who is reading from a book and he is repeating a dua and they are repeating it after him. He doesn't know what he is saying. And they may not know what he is saying. Is this the dua that Allah wants from you? Or is it the dua whereby you spill your heart out complaining to Allah of all of the burdens you have brought with you from the UK to Mecca? This is the dua Allah Almighty wants from you. And believe me, some of the things that you see there is amazing. You see people making dua and saying ameen to dua they shouldn't be making at that season. And he could be, for example, doing umrah. And the group leader is reading out the dua saying, Allahumma inna nas'aluka hajjan mabrura. Oh Allah, we ask from you an accepted hajj. Ya Sheikh, you're doing umrah. He doesn't know what he's saying. And everybody behind him is saying, Ameen, Ameen. Another Sheikh who perhaps is saying, Allahumma la tada' lana dhanaban. Oh Allah, do not leave for us any. He wants to say sins. Dhanban. He says dhanaban, which now means a tail. Oh Allah, don't leave for us any tales. And everyone is saying, Ameen. So somebody next to him said, Illa qata'ta. Allah, cut our tales for us. Don't leave us with any tales here in Mecca. And somebody else may be reciting the back of the book, printed in Saudi Arabia. Tubi'a fi Mecca al Ameen, Ameen. Ignorance, brothers and sisters, that we are all perhaps susceptible to. But it's a worrying sign when somebody needs to be taught and spoon-fed how to speak to Allah. Ya akhi, ya ukhti. Does anybody need to educate you and I how to speak to our wives and to express our love for her? Think of the person you love the most on planet earth. Maybe you're not on good terms with your spouse. Who is it? Is it your mother or father? Is it your children? Does anybody need to educate you and me how to express our love to them? When you are in need of say money, and you know that there is a lender, a generous lender, who's willing to offer you some cash. Does anybody need to educate you or teach you how to express your need to him? You have a family to feed and you have debts to pay. Nobody needs to teach you that. It comes second nature. Now I ask, is there anybody that we need more than Allah? Is there anyone that we love more than Allah? Speak your heart. Speak your soul. Benefit from the dua of the Quran and the Sunnah, memorize them, understand them, and give yourself the opportunity to complain to Allah, to whine to Allah, to call and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as you walk around the Kaaba, think to yourself, dear brother, dear sister, I am walking on a part of the earth that was visited by prophets and messengers. I'm here. I am witnessing a building that was built by Adam, Prophet Adam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the, some, some of the scholars of Islam. I am witnessing a building, the foundations of which were raised by Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail, for sure, according to the Quran. That's that building right there. You're talking about heritage. This is heritage, la ilaha illallah. This is the building that was visited by Musa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet Yunus, Jonah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I saw both of them making their way to the Kaaba. Imagine. This is the building that shall be visited by Jesus, Isa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will come to our sides and he will worship our Lord as he always ever did. Do you realize where you are? As you walk around the Kaaba, realize that this was a place that was purified by prophets and messengers so that you may do tawaf there, according to the Quran. Allah says, وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا Allah says that we made the house a place of return for the people and a place of security. A place of return. Every time you leave the Kaaba, you want to go back. We have made the house a place of return for the people and a place of security. وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Allah said, and take, O believers, the station of Abraham as a place of salah. Listen to the rest of the ayah. وَعَهِدِنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ أَنْ طَهِّرَا بَيْتِ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالْرُكْعِ السُّجُودِ And we took an agreement from Ibrahim and Ismail saying to them both, Purify my house. For who? For those who want to do tawaf. وَالْعَاكِفِينَ Those who wish to remain there for worship. And those who bow and prostrate in this place. A place that was purified for you as you do tawaf at that moment in time. Are you thinking about this reality? Is that shaking your soul? Is that on your mind? Experience this tawaf of yours and allow it to be a 3D experience. As you walk around the Kaaba, think to yourself, Ya Akhi, Ya Ukhti, of the number of lives that were lost trying to make it to the place that you have now arrived at. Think of the sheer number of people who were consumed by sea who were eaten by wild animals, who were separated from their families, who were attacked by highway robbers, who were bedridden with fatal illnesses and had to be carried back to their homes, or people who just simply never had the financial ability to make their way to this holy place. This is where you have now just arrived at. What is this place and what is this building and what is this land? As you walk, ask yourself the question, what is this house? Allah Almighty answers, the very first house to be placed on earth for the sake of my worship, Allah says, was that house in Bakka. We talk about heritage and history. The very first building on planet earth to be built for the worship and glorification of Allah was the place that you are now worshipping Allah at at that moment in time. Bakka, Allah Almighty calls it. A name that is even found in the, in the Bible, in the Book of Psalms, chapter 84, from verse 5 to verse 10. The name Bakka is mentioned, the valley of Bakka, the building that is found within the valley of Bakka. And a well of water is mentioned in those passages of verses. And it is mentioned in those biblical verses that a person who stands in the court of that valley is a thousand times greater than standing in any other court. And our Messenger وسلم, has told us a similar message 100,000 times better than praying in any other court. As you walk around the Kaaba, think to yourself, dear brother, dear sister, that if the land beneath you was given permission to speak, Ya Allah, it would tell you countless stories that would blow you away. And planet Earth would cease to exist before it could finish telling you all of its stories. Stories, the sheer number of tears that were shed on this particular land. The sheer number of calamities that were lifted and replaced into goodness on this particular land. The sheer number of illnesses that were removed and alleviated on this particular land. 
the sheer number of impoverished people whom Allah Almighty enriched from this particular land, the sheer number of people who were heading for the hellfire, Allah Almighty ransomed them, gave them Jannah. The amount of sins that were erased on this particular land, what would it say? How would it begin? How would it conclude? La ilaha illallah. These are things, brothers and sisters, we want to think about when we are, when we are circumambulating around the Kaaba. Allah Almighty says, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْكَعْبَةَ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامَ قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ Allah has made the Kaaba, the sacred house, a maintenance for the people. Something that establishes people, allows them to walk upright. قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ The same word was used in Surah An-Nisa when Allah Almighty said, وَلَا تُؤْتُوا السُّفَهَاءَ أَمْوَالَكُمُ الَّتِي جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ قِيَامًا Don't give the fools your money which Allah has made for you a means of qiyamah, a maintenance, so that you may stand upright. The same word was used to describe the Kaaba. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْكَعْبَةَ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامَ قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ This is what makes you stand. So presence of heart is essential now that you are here. Why am I here? What is this building? What is this land? And realize, according to the consensus of the scholars, that Allah Almighty will give you a reward there in tawaf. That is directly proportionate with your presence of mind and presence of heart. Wa'alamu, the Messenger said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Realize, Wa'alamu anna Allah la yastajibu du'a'an min qalbi ghafirin lahin. Realize that Allah does not answer the du'a of a heart that is heedless and distracted. Allah doesn't answer the du'a of such a distracted heart. Urwa ibn Zubair, he said that once I approached the companion Abdullah ibn Umar, when he was circumambulating around the Kaaba, and there I proposed to him that he may hand over his daughter for me in marriage, Sauda, her name was, Sauda, the daughter of Abdullah ibn Umar. I asked him, will you marry her to me? And he did not give me a response, rather he didn't even acknowledge my existence. So I left it and I promised myself to never ask him for his daughter again. Later on, after the end of Tawaf, Abdullah ibn Umar the companion approached me and he said, My brother, apologies. ذَكَرْتَ لِي سَوْدَةَ بِنْتَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ عُمَرْ وَنَحْنُ فِي الطَّوَافِ نَتَخَايَلُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بَيْنَ أَعْيُونِنَا My brother, you came to me during a moment where I was imagining the presence of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu before me. Imagine. This was the type of presence of heart. So where are you? You are in the house of Allah, visiting Allah, the King of Kings, the one who not only has the solution to every problem, the one who not only has the ability to change circumstances for the better, he is the one whom when he says, Kun, be, it becomes there and then. Are you feeling this, brothers and sisters? Control is his, might is his, richness is his, kingdom and sovereignty is his. You have come to the house of this Lord. Therefore, allow your expectations to be high. And realize, as Allah Almighty said, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ amina. Whoever enters this house will be given security. Of course, the scholars have a fiqhi legal discussion of what this ayah means. We know that. And the people of Jahiliya, pre-Islamic ignorance, they knew this. They gave people security. Who were at the Kaaba. Whoever enters it, he will be given security. And this was something they upheld even as ignorant Arabs. There are certain things that you are scared of. You are afraid of Allah. You are afraid of your sins. You are afraid of your weaknesses. You are afraid that you're going to go back to haram when you come back to the UK. There are certain things you are scared of. Allah Almighty promises according to this ayah that you shall be given security in this place. What does that entail? That entails the pleasure of Allah. That entails Jannah. That entails safety when you are in the grave. That entails purification of sin. These brothers and sisters are some of the meanings we want to remember when we are doing our tawaf around the Kaaba. I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah. Any burden that you may bring to the table when you are doing tawaf, you bring it with sincerity, ikhlas, and an attentive heart, and tawheed, believing that nobody can alleviate your burden except Allah, except that He will, He will alleviate that burden. One of our contemporaries, he said, a contemporary of ours, a scholar in Egypt, he said, a man stood up from the crowd. He said to me, Ya Shaykh, 
I ask you in the name of Allah that you allow me to speak before you proceed with your class. He said, Uncle, please speak. What do you have to say? He said, I was a very wealthy man living in such and such country of the world. I had everything to my name that a man could dream of except one thing. I was paralyzed. I was paralyzed from around my chest downwards. And I was wheelchair bound for many, many years. And on one particular day, I was watching TV and I saw the pilgrims making their way to Arafah, circumambulating around the Kaaba. I said to my kids, take me. I want to go to the house of Allah. And so they booked me a flight, a private flight. I have the money to do so. And I got in till I arrived at the house of Allah and there the Kaaba was in front of me. He said, I said to them, can you give me some time and some space? I want to be by myself, alone with my Lord. So they left me. And there he said, I raised my hands to Allah and I made a dua that I have never made before in my life. And I began to raise my voice in dua and it was getting louder and louder and I was crying and crying, begging Allah Almighty to restore for me my health. The old man, he said, the end of my dua was so passionate that I was saying, Oh Allah, you either allow me to walk out of your house on my feet or take me to the graveyard. Give me back my ability to walk or I want to be dead. He said, by the end of the dua, my head was hurting me so much, pain. So I leant over onto the handle of my wheelchair and there I fell asleep for just a moment and something said to me, get up and walk, get up and walk. I woke up, there was warmth to my feet for the first time in how many years? And I stood up and there I found myself walking towards the Kaaba as I said, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, you are the king, you are the king. This man is alive and he's ready to tell anybody the story. Rather, we don't need to take other people's stories. You know, I know a few cases from the city I am from. Brothers who left our city, they were well known for not being able to speak. They're mute. They were born that way. And my friend, brother Muhammad, he said to me, Ali, we were there doing tawaf. And this brother, he is so keen to engage in da'wah, to enjoin good and forbid what is evil. Although he can't speak, he said he was standing and around him were a group of people in a halaqa and he was trying to speak with them and people were sat there just sympathizing with him. He's not saying anything, but people are admiring his sincerity, his passion. And they were shy to leave. He said, by Allah, he uttered a word. For the first time in all his life, he managed to utter a word. And then two words came together. Then he managed to string a sentence. And by the end of that gathering, he was speaking to them in fully fledged English. This man is with us. And he told us his story. We don't need anybody else. Brothers who begged Allah Jalla Jalaluhu to, to, to restore their vision. And there and then they took off their glasses and put them in the nearest bin. They said, what are you doing? He said, Allah's giving me back my vision. Allah has made this promise. But where are those who are willing to cash the check? Where are those who are willing to ask him with sincerity and tawheed, monotheism, realizing that no one has the ability to remove your burden, to restore your marital breakdown, to bring you back well-being to your mental health, to allow you to sleep at night, to restore your finances, and more importantly, to erase your sins and to give you Jannah. Who can do that other than Allah? وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ Allah said, is there a Lord other than me who can do this?